Hello, this is Father St. Martin. I'm here with Father Timothy Mayamba Masaba. Hello. You pronounce it well. Thank you. Yeah. So, Father Timothy, you're from uh, the country of U Uganda. Yes, I am from Uganda. Uh, Uganda is uh, on the equator. Mm -hmm. uh, it's known, well known country because it is a uh, a country where the longest river in Africa starts from. Uh, really? River Nile starts from The Uganda. Nile starts in Uganda? Uganda. Yeah. The famous Nile River. Yes. The Nile River that goes up to, to, to Egypt. the... Egypt. Egypt, the pyramids. Through Sudan, up to Egypt. That's where uh, Noah yeah. was in the basket. Exactly, that's where wow. Moses was. Moses, I mean. <laughs> yes, I remember. Moses, so Moses. come from Lake Victoria. In your wow. Yeah. We're proud of that. That's amazing. So you're like the, the, you're like the center of the universe. Yes, almost. <laughs> God has made us happy. Yeah. Well, one question I have for you that I think everyone will be interested to know. They often, people often ask priests, this question here, some, the youth will ask me when they get to know me. They said, so how did you know you were called to be a priest? But I have other questions particularly for you. Um, like, were your parents Catholic? Were your grandparents Catholic? How many generations of Christianity have there been in your family? Are you the first priest to ever be in your family? All those kinds of questions. And, and how did you know you were called? I, I can say, well, generations, really, I think many of the generations backward were not really Christians. Although we stayed close to the parish, and I think my great great parents received the missionaries really? when they were coming in that area. Wow. So some of them became, uh, of course, for most, for most of the people, they were scared about the white man coming to the sure. area. But uh, my grandparents found even an uh, opportunity to work in the parish. So they were serving as a um, casual laborers, and so and I think that, that made it easier for them. Now, you said something there very interesting to me that surprises me. They were scared. Yeah. Why? That what's well, uh, first of all, to, to, to see a white person coming in the area, all of us are black and so on. Where is one coming from? And then, of course, stories. Many stories come in. Uh, when the white person has come, he's going to take away the land, and your cultures are going to be killed completely. What you have been doing will be taken because really? they, are, they are bringing in Christianity. So that kind of thing. So there was a bit of conflict really, in many places. I... Yeah. Hmm. But as I said, my... <coughs> parents uh, loved working with the church, and I think that's why my parents, my father and my mother, were teachers. Mm. Were teachers, and the missionaries were very strict because they had built uh, primary teachers' colleges, and they strictly they were really in for the discipline of the students, the young people they were taking in those schools forming Catholics, really, strong Catholics in the church. And so if you qualified from the, the, the primary teacher's college and you were going to be married, they would recommend that you get married in church. Mm -hmm. They would follow you up. Mm -hmm. And so my parents, my father and mother, were in that same school. And when they came out, eventually they got married and they actually went in the church very early. Wow. So. <coughs> What formed our background of our family. And I know you have, you're one of 15, is that what you said? 14. 14, 14. one of 14. Seven boys, seven girls. Seven boys, seven girls. And as I mentioned, my mother had twins twice. Oh, yes, right. Twice twins. But you're not one of the twins. No, I'm no. not. You're younger than me. Yeah. Hmm. And then, let's see. So you grew up, you're going, how did you... When's the first time you thought maybe God was calling you to be a priest? <laughs> well, I don't know really, but uh, my mother used to tell me that he, uh, well, me. she used to take us to church, hold our hands and go to church every now and then. And we were admiring the priest was there. 
and we will car us in his vehicle. We had a nice little vehicle so we could sit inside there and the boot behind and they put us there and, and it was so good being close to the priest there. Mm -hmm. So my mother I remember us that we serve at mass as altar boys. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of the month we were given a pencil, an exercise book, the priest always gave us and the sweet as well. No. Oh. <laughs> so it was so, so enticing to us. And we, so we loved being close to the church. And, yeah. so, and my mother used to tell him that I could sometimes at home practice lifting the car. Oh, and yeah. So on and so. <laughs> but eventually, when I came to primary six, mm -hmm. I joined the minor seminary for primary seven, and eventually oh. senior secondary education. So you're. Um now that priest who would take you for a ride and give you and and was kind and, and nice to be around. He was he a missionary priest or he was a missionary priest? He okay. Was a, a Mill Hill missionary. Mill so Hill. Mill Hill is a Saint Joseph uh, group. They come from uh, Holland. Holland. The Holland Hindus. Yeah. I've never heard of that that particular yeah. order. Actually, they evangelize uh, right from the city of Kampala in Uganda towards the eastern part of the country. The whole eastern part of the country was theirs. The western part was the white fathers. Mm -hmm. So you, it sounds to me, you're maybe the first or second generation of native priests in your country. No, there are quite a number of... Old. So three generations of, of native priests? Yeah, there are a number of them, actually, many generations. A number of generations. I think we come a little bit later. Because the church began as early as the, well, in 19, 1920s. Or oh, okay. 20s, yeah. But in your area? In my area, now it spread later on. Okay, so your area, from yeah. your area. Yeah. Well, your tribe, would you be one of the first people in your ethnic group, your tribal group? Yeah, there are other, others who actually joined the same earlier than me. Uh -huh. uh, in my tribe, we are about 15 priests. Okay. Now, you would be in your tribe probably the best one, though, right? Perhaps the other. <laughs> but yeah. in my parish, yeah. that parish, <laughs> that parish has been blessed because after that missionary, we had another local priest yeah. who really took care of that parish very well and encouraged the vocations. And I remember, uh, so, so far we have, uh, we have actually 15 priests Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's a that's a great great number. So do you have you have a, a priest a bishop from your from no, your country? Tribe? From your tribe? No, we don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now see for I have no experience with the concept of a tribe. Yeah. But I I don't know if I'm right to think of it as similar to the way we might think of an area. Like some people would say Oh, I, we don't have anyone from this town, or, or we had many people from this town become priests, but uh, the idea of a large extended family that you would call your tribe, yeah. it's not really a concept for many. Yeah. Maybe some of the Irish, they, they really keep up with their ex whole extended family, yeah. but certainly not for me personally. Um, well, tribes are quite big, the number of clans, make up a very big, big kind of extension. So the a tribe is quite big. So. And our diocese has quite a number of tribes, actually almost over, over 14 tribes. Mm -hmm. It's always referred to as the United States of Toronto. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> we, like when we qualify, when you, when you are ordained a priest, I, I, I I didn't work in my tribe, my home tribe at all. I worked elsewhere, uh -huh. in a different tribe. Uh, I got several too, and I learned the language. I can speak that language. Okay. Really, the languages are really different. Uh huh. They are very different. Yeah, I hear there's more diversity yes. in Africa than yes. there would be in Europe, yes. between European peoples, yes. genetically and like even linguistically and yeah. culturally. Everyone thinks, oh, it's Africa, one place. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> so I learned a number of languages. I think that would give me an advantage because eventually the Archbishop appointed me as in charge of communications for the diocese. 
and particularly for the radio as well. All right. We established the radio in the diocese and I was the first director of the radio. So the languages I knew helped me a lot to be able to. Ah, oh, I j j I, you have to forgive me, but I, uh, I like to hear the way different languages sound. So I don't know if you would tell me, so your tribal language, your first language, how would you say, um, formally, hello? Hello. Lembe. Lembe. Now, yes. Lembe. Now, what's one of the, in one of the languages you learned, yeah. the other languages, how would you say, hello? Hello. Intienedi. Now you're right. Yes. They don't sound Very at all. <laughs> okay. Do you have a third one? Yes. And I don't say Biaibo. 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 <laughs> it's amazing to me. It's completely say, different. Nale, nale. Like with your sing song yeah. voice? Nale. 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 You tie the tongue around and. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So, but it is really beautiful when you have come to learn three to four languages of the races there. You really enjoy so much. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. And the, 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 our leaders, have, our, the bishops have been very good. Ooh. They always appoint you, appoint us in different places. I have to shut this off. I'm getting an emergency phone call. Hold on. Okay. okay. We'll be back for the next time. Bye.